This month here at the Clayton Center, we are featuring artwork by Ronald Lunn and Eric McRae. And right now I'm here with Ronald Lunn. Welcome, Ronald. Well, thank you for, for allowing me to exhibit my work. Well, it's great to have you here. And um, will you tell us, are you, you, where are you from? Are you from Benson originally, or do you come from well, originally farther I was, north? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Judging from my accent, yeah, yeah. It was originally from uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts. And then I moved to Ohio, and then from Ohio I moved to North Carolina, to uh, Benson. And you've been an artist your whole life, it sounds uh, like. My first painting was when I was seven years old. Seven years old. My uncle was a marine painter, and judging from my artwork, you can see I have a fondness for the ocean. Did you start out with oils at that early age? Yeah. He was um, uh, an oil painter, and uh, I used to spend my, my summers watching him paint. And then one day he just gave me a canvas and paints, and I copied what he did, and I've been doing it ever since. So did you um, pursue an art degree in school, or was it something? Yes, I went to Bridgewater State College to be an art teacher. And uh, when I went to college, the professor told me, we're not going to teach you anything. You're already established. So I ended up assisting him in teaching other students. And then I went on to uh, student teaching and so forth. And, several uh, school systems and so forth, and that was it. And you've been at several shows um, up north and oh, yes. in here? I can't even remember how many shows up north. Um, I did take a sabbatical for quite a few years, and uh, then I started up probably about two, three years ago. I started painting again, and I think it was good because it kind of gave me an opportunity to refocus and my artwork kind of changed, it evolved. I think it matured, I got a lot more detail in my work, I think it became a lot more focused and uh, my wife was the first one to notice that so and I haven't stopped since. <laughs> Is oil your preferred medium still? I love oil. I love oil, but I do use oil, uh, acrylic, pen and ink, pencil, charcoal, um, watercolors, but oil is my preferred medium. You have several drawings, or um, do you use the drawings as a starting point for your oils, or are you just, when you sit down to do a drawing, that's just going to be a drawing on its own? Uh, the drawings, they, well, as you see, are drawings. Uh, the oils, what I do is I start out with a blank canvas and I'll sit there and in my mind's eye I give it about 15 minutes and I'll project a, an image from my mind, my memory, on the canvas. And if I project that image on the canvas, that's what I paint. So you don't need any photographs to do horses or ships? I don't need a photograph, ships. I don't have to sketch it, it's in my mind and what I, I see, and Sharon will sit there and she'll say, what are you going to paint? And I'll say, well, I'm going to do a sunset or an ocean, and I'll sketch with my fingers what I'm doing, and then she'll sit there and she'll, Sharon is my wife, she'll sit there and she'll watch me start painting, and then she'll go to bed, and then in the morning, you know, she'll get up and she'll look and she'll say, oh my goodness, that's exactly what you said, and then two or three days later, it's a finished painting. That's amazing. So do you paint pretty much every day in your home studio? Uh, I would like to, but other chores take right. priority and and again you know there's times I'll sit there and if I don't get the image in my mind I'm not ready to paint and I don't want to you know start painting something without having that vision because then I'll battle I'll fight with it so if I have the image then I'll paint and if I don't have the image I might not paint for a week or maybe two or three days or something along that nature but at the same token, I may look at a painting that I've done six months ago and it will be sitting on my wall and then I'll, I'll look at it and then, you know what, I need to add a change of cloud or I need to add a fence or something because, you know, I think most art, I don't know whether it's always finished or not, 
but sometimes it needs just a little extra to like really put the final touches right. on it. You need the time away, away yeah, from it. Yeah, sometimes you need that time away from it. Or sometimes somebody else will come into the house or into my studio and they'll look and say, oh, it'd be nice if you had a, a horse or cows in the field or something like that. And then it just gives you that extra eye. Is there a particular piece here that you have a little story you could tell us? I do have several. Um, I do have one in the corner or on the back wall. Um, we call, and it's actually Sharon's, and Sharon gets upset with me because a lot of times the sofa size usually sell. And she always loves the sofa size, but it's called My Travels. And what it is, is whenever we travel, I always photograph or sketch scenes. So it's a barn, or it's maybe a tree, or it could be a stream, or maybe a group of animals, or it might be a windmill, or it could be almost anything. And what I, I did in this particular picture is I took the, a mountainscape that I had photographed, and I put that in the, the picture. And then there's a, a, a bunch of um, uh, crops and, and so forth and fields that was from, from the Midwest, and I put that in there. And there's a barn from Ohio. There's a farm scene from Virginia. You know, there's another farm scene from North Carolina. So I kind of, you know, place those all together to form a scene. It's fictitious, but it's my travels. It's what Sharon and I did for this summer. So that's where we travel. So that's our memories of our travels. So it's kind of nice because we can look at it and say, yeah, I remember these places. Will you tell us, um, you have a Facebook page if people want to yes. get in touch with you and see more of your work. Can yes. you tell us what that is? Uh, it's called Artist Ronald Lunn, and that's on Facebook. Um, and on there I, I do keep track of you know, all the paintings that I do, uh, shows that are coming up and so forth. And well, thank you so much for being part of our November exhibit. Well, thank you for allowing me to be here and hope everybody enjoys it. Now I'm here with artist Eric McRae. Welcome, Eric, to the Plain Center. Thank you so much. And Eric, you have an exhibit of abstract art from the 40s and 50s, kind of inspired? Yes, ma'am. Abstract expressionist, more colorful inspired paintings. Can you tell us um, what, uh, what kind of features would label that as from that period? What are the well, key Well, um, some of the artists that I really admire and the kind of style of work that I've kind of been strongly influenced by uh, is this abstract expressionist painting, color fill. I grew up in Washington, D.C., so in Washington there was the D.C. Uh, color fill painters. So I saw a lot of that work when I was a young man and went to the Corcoran in the National Gallery and saw works of that nature. So now, many years later, as a seasoned artist, I've kind of gone back to influences of those earlier periods of modernist painting and just exploring color, expressionistic brush stroke, uh, the texture and, and composition, all those kind of issues that are more uh, non-specific, not objective to at the same time using them to communicate with my viewer on an intellectual and a spiritual level. Now, um when did you start? You've been an artist your whole life. Yes, um, I have. Yeah, how how yeah. tiny were you when you first started uh, doing art? When I first started doing art, I was, well, you know, they say kids start off coloring with crayons. So I say that's when I first started, when I was very young and creating art. And what happened was that instead of stop making art, I, I continued. Most people start and stop. And so it's been my lifelong vocation, what I call my great obsession. And I've been making art and getting acknowledge as an artist from fairly young, maybe in the first grade, second grade. And it's just been my whole life I've been doing this and obtain a scholarship to college and have a degree in art and build a business and a career as an artist. And I have a studio in downtown Raleigh at Art Space and I've been there almost 18 years. Wow. It's so amazing to have an artist that 
doesn't have a plan B that you've been able to actually make this your career? Well, I, sometimes I feel I'm on plan G, you know? <laughs> but uh, when, I, when I left art school, I worked in graphic design and signage and things. And for about a 10 year period, I worked in corporate America. I was doing, uh, uh, worked in the biomedical field, financial services. Um, I also did, um, uh, worked in the computer industry. So I worked in IT. And that's for about a 10 year period, but at the same time, I was also making my art, exhibiting art, and selling my art. And at a certain point, I, I grew weary of people saying, oh, you did all that art, so why are you here? Hmm. And I realized I had gotten off my path. I learned a great amount in these different uh, uh, industries and businesses, and it really honed my skill set. But I realized I was off my call, outside of my calling and off my path. So. That's when I went full time again as an artist uh, about 18 years ago. And so I've been working full time as an artist. And how big a part of your um, professional artist career is teaching? I do some teaching. I don't do a lot. I teach at the Cary Art Center. I uh, teach also at Jerry's Autorama, I teach workshops with them. And I do uh, workshops periodically in different places, depending on what comes up. But I really focus, uh, I, I try not to let the teaching take up too much of my time. Uh, I enjoy it, but as I became more popular a teacher, I found my personal painting time started to shrink and shrink and shrink. So I really put a big emphasis on creating, creating art in my studio and displaying and selling my work. And the uh, works in this exhibition of a byproduct of me really gr like targeting in and focusing and putting a lot of emphasis on new works. And, so that's what these works are. Now in the past you've done a jazz series. Oh yeah, yeah. Well known for, and a, a coastal series. Yeah, is that mm -hmm. correct? yeah. So you wanna tell us a little bit about those? Well, my, my jazz work is, I painted jazz off and on for about 20 years. I think I painted my, created my first jazz work in 95, 1995. And my coastal and my landscape work was work I worked on off and on for many years. And what happened with those was more so an exploration with the landscapes, really studying and traveling through North and South Carolina. And the jazz work was more so uh, my passion for music and jazz and vicariously living through musicians coming out. So at a certain point, I kind of felt a uh, more and more of a closure to those previous works and, and just delved headfirst into these new abstract works. So, um, what's next, or is that still a secret? Uh, well, I do have some other things up my sleeve, and I have some other projects in my studio. I'm kind of contemplating, bouncing around some ideas. I'm always trying to stay fresh and relevant and stay busy producing. Um, a big part of being an artist to me is actually being productive, and not so much just the lifestyle or the image and all the, um, externals that people get caught up into but for me it's more so like how many paintings did I produce and when it's all said and done and I'm no longer here uh, people can look back and say well this is what he accomplished so um, my short-term long-term goal is to produce a, a considerable amount of abstract art and I'm working on some large-scale abstractions now. How far and wide are, do your sales reach? Well uh, because of the internet uh, I can sell pretty broadly uh, but even before the internet, I had the good fortune of selling a lot of work and, and works being in, I work in Australia, South Africa, Japan, parts of Europe, across the United States. My work's better traveled than I am, let me put it that way. So uh, I've been very fortunate. I've been very, very fortunate. So um, where you are at Art Space, people mm -hmm. can come by first Friday mm -hmm. and probably maybe some other times actually visit your studio mm -hmm, mm -hmm. downtown? Yeah, well my studio in downtown Raleigh, I'm not there as much as I used to be, so it's kind of by appointment. Um, but I, I have the good fortune of being able to uh, have company there and, and guests come in and, and can see my work, collect my work, see my creative process. And uh, also a lot of those collectors that I've obtained have been from coming into art space and from galleries and exhibitions I've had. And you have a website that people could see more of more your work and get in touch with you. Yeah, uh, my website's ericmcray.com, and their last name is spelled M-C-R-A-Y. Not McRae, 
McRae, M-C-R-A-Y, ericmcrae.com. And I'm on Facebook, Twitter, all the social media also. Well, thank you so much for exhibiting us with us here. Thank you so really much. I'm glad to be here. It's exciting. I'm having a great time. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our December exhibit will be December 8th here at the Clayton Center, and we will be featuring artists Tammy Kaufman and Jana Williams. Tammy Kaufman does pastel landscapes that are ethereal and beautiful, and Jana Williams does whimsical animals. It's going to be a great show. Hope to see you there.